Well, I'm going to take a moment to review the rule that is 8102 voltage drop. So let's look at what it says in the 2024 edition of the Canadian Electrical Code before we go ahead and do some example problems on a different video, because everybody's waiting for example problems. So voltage drop rule one, rule 8102, I do have another video that talks about why voltage drop is significant. Uh, it does this is a really important section. It provides a method to ensure the utilization of voltage for electrical equipment is within the values that contribute to the safety of the electrical installation and optimum performance of the equipment. Basically, the, there's going to be a difference between the voltage source to the voltage load or to the load that is going to use that. So, And that is going to drop a little bit uh, throughout the uh, conductor length. So the voltage drop calculations let us calculate how long the length of conductor can be for a given application. But let's look at the rule itself. The rule itself is only like this. And oops, I forgot. I still have the word evil in here. Evil table D3. Just because we don't like table D3, it's actually not so bad. If you watch my video on how to use table D3 in an organized manner, it's actually pretty simple. So let's talk about what it says in 8102 voltage drop. Uh, rule one, I mean, subsection one, subsection one here. Let's get another color here. Subsection one just says that the voltage drop can't be more than 5% from the source to the load, and it can't be more than 3% in a feeder or branch circuit. All right. So I'll show you where that is. I mean, I'll show you a diagram of that. So here we go. Sub rule one, it basically looks like this. Can't be more than 5% uh, be between the service and the load terminals of utilization. So where it is supplied and where it is used, it can't be more than 5%, can't be th more than 3% in any feeder or branch circuit in any one. So here is a nice diagram. This comes from the Canadian Electrical Code part one handbook. This one is the 2021 edition. This is also published by CSA. Thank you, CSA, for publishing this. I love this picture. It says, here's the service, and here's the load. And between the service and the load, you can't have more than 5% of your voltage dropping. You cannot have more than 3% dropping between feeder and branch. You cannot have more than uh, 3%, sorry, um, in the feeder, and you cannot have more than 3% in the branch. That's what it says. That is sub rule one. Pretty simple and straightforward. Sub rule, oh, here's an example uh, we can do about sub rule one. So this is a, a voltage drop example for sub rule one. So if the supply voltage is, this is a good question for any of the exams, so please study this. If the supply voltage is 240 volts, which means here we go, we have 240 volts here. Then what is the maximum total voltage drop that's allowed? Well, it is 5%. The maximum amount is 5% of that 240 volts. So it is simply 240 volts times 5%, which is 0 0.05 in a decimal form. So that is 12 volts. So the maximum amount that this that this can decrease uh, across the conductor length is 12 volt drop. I just calculated 5% of 240. And then what is the maximum each in each feeder or branch circuit? Well, uh, then it is the supply voltage again, it's 240 times 3%. 240 times 3%, so that's 7.2. So this cannot drop more than 7.2 volts and this cannot drop more than 7.2 volts and you cannot drop more than 12 combined. So if this is going to drop 7.2, hang on a second, if this is going to drop 7.2 here, ah, If we're going to drop 7.2 in the branch, then we cannot drop 7.2 in the feeder because it would be more than 12. So this has to be observed, the 12 uh, voltage drop here. And that's how subsection 1 of rule 8, uh, 102 works. So a nice little example problem. Make sure that you understand that. Subrule 2 of 8102 says that if 
you're from other sections, for example, like the motor section, uh, then the voltage drop calculation can be calculated based on the demand load. It can be calculated based on the calculated demand load of the feeder or branch, not based on 80% of the rated over current protection device. All right, so you have to know if you've coming from other sections, then you can use sub rule two. Thank you for sub rule two. Sub rule two, three also makes us happy because it says if you're in a residential dwelling, not more than 120 volts and 12 and 20 amps, there is no need to use our evil table D3 math. You can just use table uh, 68 instead. So in your code book, you have to flip a lot to find all of these subsections and rules and, and, um, and everything and find table 68, but here it is here, table 68. If you're in a residential setting of 120 volts, less than 20 amps, then you can use this happy little circuit. You can use, I mean, this happy little table instead, and we can use table 68 and no D3 in residential. That's kind of cool. We're starting to like this. We're starting to like this section. Okay, here we go. Subsection, uh, sub rule four says that intention is that design ensures the voltages within rating or tolerance of connected device by a qualified individual when one exists. Where there are qualified individuals, their design should be within tolerance. So basically, sub rule four, let's see how it's actually worded in the uh, in the rule, it says notwithstanding sub rule one at industrial establishments where conditions of maintenance, where conditions of maintenance and supervision ensure use by qualified persons, the device shall ensure that the voltages at the point of utilization is within the rating or voltage tolerance of the connected devices. So this says that uh, yes, sub rule one is happening, but uh, also uh, the tolerances will be watched for by the um the the supervision at the industrial facility so that's what the actual rules are talking about for 8102 and you should really have a good understanding watch this a couple of times to get a good understanding all i did in this video is i walked you through um subsection one two three and four. And as a summary, subsection one says that you can't drop um, from supply to service. Um, so, sorry, from supply of the of the service to the point of utilization, you can't drop more than 5% and you can't drop more than 3% in any feeder or branch circuit. Uh, sub rule two said that if you are in a different section of the code, then you can select the overcurrent devices according to that section of the code. Section three said that if you're in a residential circuit, 120 volts, 20 amps, then you can use table 68 to um, to uh, simplify things. And section four says if there is an in an if you're in an industrial establishment where there is maintenance and supervision, then the design will ensure that the voltage at the point of utilization is within rating and voltage tolerance of the connected device. Now, what are you concerned about? I know exactly what you're concerned about. Uh, you are concerned about the voltage drop calculations that are sitting right here in subsection one. You are concerned about that and you would like to look for example problems. So let me do a next video about example problems.